So what I've been explaining in the last clip is that a financial advisor is really working for the financial services industry and as explained in that particular piece of paper, those pieces of paper when it comes to you wanting to be a financial advisor, you're learning all sorts of stuff about not simply investing, you're learning about all the different industries and financial services mean a customer comes to the bank, a customer comes to the insurance companies and as a financial advisor your goal is not to teach these people how to be smart with money your goal is to basically get these people dependent on life insurance health insurance and everything else that they have to offer and that's your goal so they're not going to teach you a lot of sole things about investing now that brings me to my next point because okay that course costs five thousand dollars to do and this guy here has an explanation for that okay now in some of the other clips that i i have i don't speak very highly of, of this guy at all and that's for reasons that you'll understand if you look at some of those other clips if you look at my series on taxes you'll, you'll understand what i'm referring to but i actually did have a lot of respect for him for a long time because that's one of three books that he has written in regards to investments and he basically says that for every dollar you get from an investment when you put your money in a portfolio fund according to him half of it goes to the fund managers and he talks about the amount of fund managers there are there are so many fund managers per industry which goes back to the idea I had. What I was going to do is I was going to have two people work in it as, as fund managers and one person would be looking at the financial statements and saying, okay, yep, I think this is a pretty good investment. I'll, we'll put our money here. And then the other person would be the administration person taking the phone calls. And according to this guy, there's so many people working as fund managers, financial advisors. But when I say financial advisor, I mean the fund manager too, okay. And it just doesn't stop. This guy talks about the layers of financial advisors, fund managers in a particular industry that deals with finance, that deals with people's investments and all that. And he says that for every dollar you earn, about half of it goes to that. Now he's got his own agenda because he's got Gareth Morgan KiwiSaver. KiwiSaver is the equivalent of an IRA and he's got plenty of money so he can go and he's been doing this for years he's been investing it's a thing called economies of scale okay here's how it works suppose I am dealing with ten thousand dollars and I'm putting your money in the New York Stock Exchange okay now I need my fee is five hundred dollars a week I need to get at least five hundred dollars a week so there's ten thousand dollars available I need five hundred a week now you compare that to someone who's dealing with millions of dollars and would need five hundred dollars a week I've got to charge more because I'm dealing in a limited amount I need five hundred a week from ten thousand dollars worth of funds he needs five hundred dollars a week from millions of dollars worth of funds so as a percentage, I've got to charge out a little bit more. Now, that's using that's being very, very simplistic, very simplistic. But that's what economies of scale means. Now he's got many people working for him, but he's dealing in millions and millions of dollars. So he's got his own agenda, but it doesn't change the fact that at that point in time, people were not really making a good return on their KiwiSaver, which is the equivalent of an IRA. So he's written three books about that sort of stuff, talking about how, you know, these people are just absolutely ripping you off. You're not getting a good return. Now, what does that say about you putting your money in gold and silver? What that's doing is that's being competitive with these people. Because now you, you can, you're basically saying to them, hey, if I'm not going to get a good return on this, pal, then never mind, because I can put my money in gold and silver as a hedge. I don't, I don't need to go with, with what you're doing. And and that's 
a very powerful mechanism because that's actually giving competition to the financial advice industry. Okay, so that's one group of people. But also with the financial advisor, they also like to teach you about real estate. Now, for those who have watched my original clips, the original series, Gold and Silver, Why It's So Safe, I explained to you that when you're putting your money in property, you're not putting it in 100% belongs to you property. I'm talking about if you're living in America or you're living in New Zealand, that's how the rules work is you don't have a hundred percent ownership in property. And you might need to take a look at previous clips I've done. I will I'll give you the information on how to look that up. But basically what it means is that if you miss a payment or you don't do what you're required to do, there's all sorts of laws they can they, they have on you and they can change those laws anytime they want, even though you would say that you're the property owner. And with that, they can tax you. Now, here's the thing they want to do. You go to a real estate auction, you have made their day. Because if there's a thousand people at that real estate auction saying, I've got all this money, I've got all this money, what happens? The price, they're able to charge the maximum. But what if you decide, hey, I don't really have that much money. There's no way I'm going to win. There's, there's no way, only the person with the most money is going to win, okay? and everybody else decides that and only a few people come to the real estate auction and they go oh there's only 10 of us here then what that means is they've got the bargaining power because if there's a thousand people all wanting to put their money in property because they think it's it's the real deal they think they they're getting a sure return if there's many people at a real estate auction they're going to charge more if there's few people, they're going to charge less. And governments, guess what? Guess what they want? They want the price to go up as high as possible because they can charge more tax for it. And that's what they want. They want to be able to tax you as much as possible. So you think you're going and you're getting something, and don't get me wrong, you are getting something. You're getting a house, okay? You're getting a house. I'm not going to dispute that. You are getting a house. You are getting something of value. But do you see my point? What I'm saying here is with gold and silver, you're taking yourself and maybe your family, well, of course your family, if you've got one, you're taking yourself and your family with you. You're on a journey. You're on an adventure. Every time that goes up in value, you get the whole amount. Now, what about with the financial advisor? You're, you're wanting to get a good return. Your financial advisor is able to get some money out of it. The government is able to tax you. They're getting something out of it. And then, oh, wait a minute. You've got inflation to worry about. I'm not saying that it won't, you won't get ahead. But what I'm saying is you're on a journey. You're going somewhere. And all these people are tagging along and getting something out of it. And with gold and silver, they're not getting anything out of it. And that's the angle that I'm looking at things from. Is I know that you're not getting a fantastic return, but I also know you're not taking the same risks if you put it in for 10 years. So when you look at it from that point of view, do you think these people are going to be that pleased with you wanting to put your money in gold and silver? No, they're not, because they're not they're not getting anything out of it. You're getting something out of it. You're profiting. And that's why they need to give you all this information and say it's not safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. So at this point, what I want to do is for the remainder of this clip and if need be another clip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the myths that they, they give you. Okay. So let's just 